In The Magic of Reality, I define three different kinds of magic. There's supernatural magic, like when a fairy godmother turns a pumpkin into a coach. There's conjuring stage magic, like when a stage magician pulls a rabbit out of a hat. And there's the magic of reality, which is the sort of magic you get when you look up at the stars, when you look up at the Milky Way, when you look down a microscope and say, this is magical. The Magic of Reality is written for young people, 12, a bit below 12 maybe, and up to old people. I like to think of maybe people reading it as a family, passing it around the family, maybe parents reading it to their children, and maybe everybody learning a bit from it, because I certainly learn quite a lot while writing it. The structure of the book is that each chapter is headed by a question, like what is the sun, what is a rainbow, what is an earthquake? And each chapter begins with a set of myths, myths about the sun, myths about the earthquake, myths from all around the world, myths from South America, myths from Egypt, myths from ancient Greece, and so on. But then the real meat of the chapter is what really is the sun, what really is an earthquake, what really is a rainbow, and so on. And that's the science, the scientific truth of what actually is out there. The book is illustrated by Dave McKean, who's a famous illustrator of books for young people. He's produced some beautiful imaginative paintings to illustrate the myths. And when it comes to the science in each chapter, his illustrations really do help to clarify. Among the myths in several of the chapters, you'll find the Judeo-Christian myth, uh, not given any special privileged position, but just tucked in there somewhere. So um, Jesus turning water into wine, for example, the so-called miracle of Fatima, where three young children thought they saw the Virgin Mary and told lots of people about it. To take just one chapter, what is the sun? There are Aztec myths from South America. The peoples of South America worship the sun as a god. As well they might, because the sun is the life-giving source of energy for all of life on this planet. And the Aztecs had rather horrible human sacrifices for the sun. The ancient Greeks thought that the sun was a chariot being driven across the sky, a golden chariot driven across the sky. What really is the sun? Well, the sun is a huge ball of gas, mostly hydrogen, being turned into helium by the same sort of process as goes on in a hydrogen bomb. And that produces all the energy, ultimately all the energy, that fuels life on Earth. And don't you think that's much more magical than some imaginary chariot racing across the sky?